we'll get your name. Say, how you do? At this time, the prime minister of this church, the district elder, the Rebecca Deloach, Rebecca? Rebecca Deloach, will come at this time and bring us the word of the Lord. And I know she's doing double duty because she not only was the pastor of um, Mother uh, Chestnut, but she was a daughter. She was a child. She helped to take care of uh, Mother Chestnut. And so we are praying for her. Amen? Amen. That God will anoint and strengthen her for the preaching of the word. And that faith might come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. This big elder, Rebecca Deloach. At this time, let's say amen. Amen. Come on, let's say praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. And we too rejoice. Yes. And we are glad. And yes. he can see it in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yes. As my father used to always say, he has called this assembly together. The Lord called this assembly together. He knew who needed to be here. He knew who would come through these doors. He knew who would honor the life of Mother Thelma May Chestnut. Amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah, a dedicated, a dedicated woman of God. It's awesome how this woman who never gave birth, birthed all of us as children, amen. That's right. What an awesome miracle of God. And my words will be few and simple, but there's a scripture that Mother Chestnut, anytime we would go, and let me give honor to my elder Albert Bridge, um, uh, all the ministers, the past our bishop, to all who honor is due to, because I figured I'd just get up and start talking. But Mother Chestnut loves Psalms 23. Yeah. That was her chapter. And any time that we would go and see her or talk to her, you just start saying the words. And she would just say it right along with you. As we honor the Lord today, I just want to give this verse of scripture to you and then even in a song. But in the New Living Translation, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength, and he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And even when I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. So surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. She learned that at an early age that there's no Shepherd, the Lord gave you another reminder on June 29th, 2016. The messages have been preached by everybody. And what the Pastor Peck said, may the life I live. Well, somebody said, may the life I live speak for me. Somebody said that. Her testimony is already given. Her life is already lived. Nobody had to say there's no work to come up here and do for Mother Thelma May. And she's preached it because she lived it. And she honored God with all of her life. She's saved. What about 
you. She's safe. She's not in there. She's with the Lord in heaven rejoicing. Hallelujah, rejoicing around the throne of God. She's safe. What about you?
she said so. Not only because my mom and daddy said so. I am the evidence of a true living God. Amen. Come and let's reason together. Let's come on wonderful. Time is short. And we got to come together in love and unity. Let us leave here today knowing that there is a God. And if we live right and be made whole, we shall see him in the fullness of the earth. Well done. Well done. Thank good and faithful yes. You are not gone. Yes. You are more than me to yes. Yes. And I'll never forget you. And I love you. All praise to the spirit of the living God. Amen. To the angel of this church, and to all the ministers, and also to the family. I come here uh, to say uh, to represent the uh, Green Baptist Temple. Uh -huh. Our senior pastor is uh, Albert Morgan, better known as the mailman. Uh -huh. uh, we're here to support the whole bill. The Lord has a church, and I love him and his family. And uh, I did not know Mother Chestnut. Flesh, but I do know her in spirit. Yeah. And I have a little story to tell you. This was a elderly lady. She went to the store every day. She would be in the store and she would buy a little container of milk. And then she would walk out the door. Two guys standing there talking. Couldn't figure out where she went. So the next day she came back to the store. Put another small container of milk. And the two guys are standing there talking and they turn around to your dog. So they said, well, we're going to find her and find out where she went. So they searched the neighborhood and they saw her sitting on the stoop. They said, Miss, we have a question because we see you every day. You come in and out of the store. And we look for you and disappear. Can you tell us what happened? She said, oh, baby, that's easy. I take a shortcut to the graveyard to get home. I love if you
Amen. Amen. She's over there with me. Her father, Bishop Lewis. And found all the saints up there, and they over there somewhere in, in glory land. Yeah. And we give God praise. Sister Aretha Smith, one of my pastor's aid and faithful members. Thank God for She always talked so much about her mother. Amen. And I just thank God. You know, it's just beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, and she told me how her mother went home. I thought about it. The Lord of the scriptures says, beautiful in the eyes of the Lord, in the death of the righteous. There's no struggle. She just went to see it. Amen. And you know, she, as from all that I have heard of her down through the years, truly she left a legacy. Amen. For many to follow. And I just pray, amen, that you will continue. I'm so happy to see so many of my dear fellow. Say that we have fellowship together down yeah. through the years from teenagers. Yeah. That's, been a, that's been a while. Wow. <laughs> but thank God, God is so good. And I just remember, hallelujah, that one day, hallelujah, one day. as the brother just said, she is somewhere around God. Uh -huh. And somewhere around God, oh, hallelujah. If she was saying to you today, today, she would say, look for me in heaven up there. Yeah. She's right there. Thank God bless you. Heaven's smile upon you. Thank God for such a life that was needed. Amen. Amen. All of the children of Mother Chestnut, everybody that she raised a touch, just stand up right quick. I think that's everybody. They're still standing. They're still standing. They're still standing. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Amen, Good morning. Saints. Uh, I, there ain't even enough time in the day to tell my story. I just want to say that I want to uh, give you all just a brief story. Um, my baby brother was raised by Mom Chestnut, but the system, we were both young, so the system wasn't on our side. Because I was bailing. I was bailing every day, every morning at DHS until I found my baby. So one day the guard took me upstairs and said, I'm going to help you. And he gave mommy, me mommy's address. No, he didn't give me mommy's address. The court system did. And they said, as long as you don't keep that going to be in touch with his biological mother right now because she's sick, I will tell you and help you. Let me inspect. You say you have an apartment, let me come and inspect it. They sent the inspectors to my apartment, and by me being young, they still gave me a chance to see my brother one day a weekend. So I finally, I finally met mommy face to face. She said, I love you. She said, I don't know what you've been through, but I got your brother, her and Pastor John Lewis, Grandpa. Mommy said, I can give you more than one day with him. If you promise me you bring him to church every Sunday with him, and then you take him back on Sunday, I didn't live far from Mommy, then you can walk him home. So at 17 years old, between 17 and 18, the court gave me one day with my baby brother, Antoine Tennant, but my chestnut was out me the whole weekend. You understand what I'm saying? I follow her rules. That's why Bible Union belongs to me. That's my church family. It's going to always be in my heart. But one thing she helped me is to get back my main heart, my brother. And in this process, I adopted so many brothers and sisters. And I just want to say thank you, Mommy. You just don't know how much you mean to me and Antoine. And I love you. Thank y'all. Uh, amen, everybody. Honor the Lord for being here today. Your honor to Pastor Lewis and my brother, Elder Donald. I pray bless the Lord for the opportunity to be in the house today. I was trying to look at the program and see where I could sneak up here and <laughs> say something. And I didn't quite qualify as a neighbor or friend, so I asked my sister back there, 
think I could sneak in here and say I'm a part of the church down there. <laughs> but I go back about 65 years Ooh, ago. Mother Chestnut, who was then Sister Chestnut, Valma <laughs> Chestnut, was my Sunday school teacher. Oh. And I bless the Lord for what she put into my life. When they sang this morning, my hope is built on nothing less. That's what she taught us as children, who to build our hope upon. And I stand today here as a memorial to the fact that the things that she taught were put down in my heart and were taught me how to live for God. Now she's there with all that, that court of teachers who gave their life to teach children. She's there with, with uh, Mother Green. She's there with my mother, who you all come called Mother Rebels. She's there with, with Mother Watson. She's there with Bertha Chestnut. All the women who poured into our lives. So I come here this morning to honor her because of the life that she lived and the impression and the impact that she made upon so many lives. I honor her today because she is a light even now showing us the way. Because one thing we do want to do is see her again. And she taught us the only way to see her again is to come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So each day, as we live now and remember her, remember that she wants to see us again. And we should use that as an emphasis to live our life according to the word of the living God. Amen. I bless you this morning, and I thank God for what she poured into my life. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I could not sit here and not say anything. I've been sitting beside Mother Chestnut. I don't know how many years. I know it has to be about 10, 15 years, maybe more, just to go here in this corner. It's all of it. The one thing that I can do, like to share with you all, we used to stand up, like they asked you to stand up for prayer. She and I would sit. So sometimes she would get up and stand. And so I had to stand up. So I said, you stand up. I said, make me look bad. I said, up and, you, and you standing up. But she would always get up and stand up. I could go on and on and tell little things. Oh, I sit over in this corner when she stopped coming to church. Then, and I don't know if anybody really paid any attention. I never sit all the way to the end. This is my second time sitting all the way to the end of her. I always reserved that as long as she was still free, and I reserved that spot for her. And they always tell me, you're going to be the next mother, but I'll never touch you. I'll never touch mother, just not. So don't even look for me to even start trying to find her footsteps. This is, um, I used to ride a date on it, but I don't know why I didn't write a date on this. But this is something that I wrote for one of her birthdays. I say, T is for Thelma, we all, T is for Thelma, as we all know. H is for the help she gives children by the score. E is for every good deed she does. L is for the love she has for everyone. M is for mom, as she's called by some. A, always there whenever they say come. C is for Karen, for family and friends. H is for the help she gives. It has no end. E is for everlasting faith in God. S is for service that come right from the heart. T is for truth, trustworthy too. N, nothing she would not try to do for you. U is for unity, all the children she raised today. Some gather here to give her praise. T, when I wrote this, was T was for Thursday. That was a birthday, you know. And we all would like to say happy birthday and many, many more, which we probably would have been saying next month. But I changed that and I say T is for all the people she touched. So um, ever since I uh, came to Bible Union 24 years ago, uh, we used to have night service. Coming from not going to church and trying to do my new church thing. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't a whole, of course, it wasn't a whole lot of people, but it was. 
chestnut right there, the bishop, uh, Mother Lewis, and maybe a few others. And then I see like, you know, you're greeting me and how you doing and uh, you know, uh, you know, good, you know, welcome me, welcome me in. And um, she would say, uh, her saying to us, uh, go on the ball. I was like, what? I scratched my head. I don't remember going nothing. <laughs> she was like, you, you know, to me and Tony all the time, y'all my boys, y'all on the ball. I said, well, mother, you say so, then we on the ball. <laughs> so, uh, you know when the weather get bad, you ain't trying to come to church. Y'all know how we are when the rain and stuff. But, again, you know, well, the chestnut will be here. <laughs> Rain, sweet, snow. As long as they was able to move the car and bring it up to this church, the mother chestnut is here. Amen. So I'm like, oh, I'm a young man. Don't let the weather affect me. So, you know, I always took that to heart. I really took that to heart. I like, man, mother chestnut going out in the snow and the rain and the bad weather. Up here praising God. I'm home watching what, cartoons or something. <laughs> so, in that part, you know, she touched me, and that helped motivate me to come out and just be a part. My mother, mother shut up, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, you can, you can, we can all stand here all day and say all kinds of things, but because of her genuine love, yeah. genuine love, and she would, and she would kiss you. <laughs> she would give you a kiss, you know, say you want to fall and. And uh, keep up, the, you know, keep up the good work, and always an encouragement, always an encouragement. So you know, when you seen her, you, you had to be blessed and encouraged. It's my saying. So I'm going to miss mother, but again, uh, she's here. She's here. She can never be gone. That's right. She gave me love, and you know, and she ain't hurt me enough, but she loved me like she did. And that was it. Great honor and privilege. God be praised. Come on, give God a great big hand clap praise if you will. We serve an awesome, mighty, wonderful God. I just want to take a moment, amen, to, to give all glory, honor, and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the pastor of this church, amen, to Pulpit Associates, amen. God bless you real good. My name is Pastor Patrick Rice, and I'm a product of offspring of chastisement by amen amen mother chestnut amen and, and she'll truly be missed amen not just because of who she was but because of what she done amen she, she was what that that term village mother she, she epitomized that she raised how many flowers have you in here we got it y'all just lift your hand up amen we're all products amen of, of mother chestnut we, we knew that, amen, it wasn't nobody else was watching. She was watching. Amen. She epitomized the word neighborhood. See, we done got it twisted now because we don't have many mother chestnuts left. Amen. Now they call it the hood because ain't nobody peeping out the window no more. They ain't got no neighbors. Amen. They done took neighbor out of the hood. Amen. But she was peeping out. She wasn't peeping. We knew she was there. God be praised. Amen. So we knew that when we got to that area of the block, you even had to hold your tongue. Do what you're supposed to do and you had to do it right because she was chasing you. Amen. She would chastise you because she said you, you one of mine. Amen. Somebody said, y'all say amen. Y'all know the truth. And amen. God be praised. So I just wanted to just say thank you, amen, to God for loaning us, Mother Chestnut, for a hundred plus years. Somebody can give God a praise right there. And amen. You don't get to be 104 and not living right. You don't get to be 104 and not treating people right. Glory to God, she fed all of us. You would, couldn't be hungry around her. Amen. Amen. So I just thank God for this family who I love as my own. Amen. So I'm calling you Uncle now. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But I, I bless God that she saw me in my mess. I'm, I'm a crackhead sinner saved by grace. And Amen. She didn't, she didn't look at me sideways. She would always say, I'm going to pray for you, baby. And I'm going to pray that demon right out of you. The devil is on fire. And the truth ain't in him. Let go, my child. And y'all see the uh, what happens when you pray right. The prayers of the righteous avail us much. For I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. 
God bless you, Mother Chester. Get your rest, and we'll see you in glory. I thank God. I'm going to be this short. I thank God for A. Thelma. Better known as A. Thelma. And some follow all the names that the young lady said at the beginning. But I thank God for A. Thelma. A. Thelma didn't raise me all together, but she had a hand in it. And she raised my children, my Charlie, my Tony Curtin, Charlie, and Renee. And I remember a long time ago when Dorothy B. Loach was alive. And Dorothy had Patty. And Dorothy was looking for somebody to watch Patty so she could go to work. She was talking to me. Dorothy and me were real close. And I said, ask a thumb. And she said, she don't watch. She said, but she got so many kids. I said, you ask a thumb. <laughs> she asked a thumb. And a thumb took Patty on and raised Patty up to today. And look at Patty today. Amen. And she said, it's last thing. Amen. In 1977. Wow. I raised my four children alone, single-handed. Thank God who paid me and Raised my children alone. And I got a house. I was looking for a house for us to live in. The Lord blessed me to see our house on Wednesday. Pick up the key on Thursday. All right. And on Friday, we moved in. All right, mommy. So, I said, I need this house blessed. Mother was still alive at the time. But God didn't drop in my heart for my mother. And all the people that I know that's in the church, the saints, as well as the eights, but he <laughs> dropped in my heart a Thelma. I called a Thelma. Uncle Vance brought her up to my house, 4904 North 8th Street. All right. And a Thelma, we didn't have but boxes in the house at the time. A Thelma stood there right in the corner where my piano is now. And we gathered together in a circle. And a Thelma blessed my house. That was in 1977. Wow. You should see 4904 today. Wow. Ain't gonna pray for our house and bless it. And I thank God for that. Thank God for Rita. Thank God for Charlene. For all of you. I'm so glad to see it. But I just want to bless Ain't Thumma for what she has done for us. She means a lot to every one of us. You don't believe it, just look around and see how many people are here. Like that song says, May the life I live speak for me. Praise the Lord, saints. I, I, I had to make it down here. When uh, y'all know me, I am Calvin Petaway. My mother and Miss Chestnut. When you see my mother, you see Mother Chestnut. We are family, and, 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 and I tell you, it's, I've been down this road before. With my mother, and you guys know, with my father, and, and it's, 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 and when Miss Chestnut, when Mother Chestnut died, that was part of the reincarnation of everything else. And it is hard, it's, it's hard. But you know what the most significant part about that? She lived for the flow. It's a whole different ball game for your mom to live for God. Amen. For 120, 100, 103 years old, 102 years old. All I know my life, she lived for the Lord. Yes, and everybody, the young people in the neighborhood, know she lived for God. And it's a whole different, you know, we gonna miss her. Show we gonna miss her. But she's going on with the Lord. Uh, as well as my parents and, and, and others who live for God. And that's all we have to do. Live for God and we can see her one day. You know, it, it, in one part of me, it's it, it, it sad, but the other part of me, it's happy. And that's why I am where I am in God. And that's where it's, it, it, we have to be. Amen? Amen? I love you all. God bless. Amen. Amen. Hello. 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 I was the last part of young people when I was just next to the kids a little while before she went to the home. Um, we spent a lot of time in here in the summers with her, my grandfather, my grandmother, getting coupons. Uh, you couldn't walk down the street. She sold a penny. If you didn't pick that penny up, it was going to be a problem. But I remember being young and just thinking Mother Chestnut was fearless because you could go to her house and like um, the one gentleman said, she talked to everybody on the street. She killed stuff with her bare hands. Like, she caught a bee in the car with her bare hands. Just crazy little stuff. It was funny, like, you think about it. 
but she taught us to love and respect God, love and respect the house of God. You know, we were recalling when, you know, we would, we had evening service, so we'd be in church Sunday from Sunday school to like late night, 10 o'clock, <laughs> p.m. And so as young people, teenagers, you know, you want to bring games. We had Uno cards. You could not play Uno cards. And Monica, she threw a shoe at somebody's head because we were telling her they weren't regular playing cards. But you didn't disrespect Monica Chestnut, so you put the cards away. Um, but she loved us, and she instilled um, just so much, so much love for God in us. And when I went away to college, you know, as I was getting ready to go, we, we used to pick her up after my grandfather died. We would pick her up in the morning and make breakfast at Sunday school. And so it would be me, Antoine, and Jessica. And Antoine, we had a minivan, so she couldn't climb up in it. So Antoine scooped her up like a baby and put her in the minivan. And she looked at me and she said, can you believe this? I used to pick him up like a baby. I, him like a baby. I said, no, I can't believe you used to pick up Antoine like a baby. But she, it was, she was like, that just tickles me. And she, I mean, she had those kind of stories. And she was my grandparents. She could tell those stories. Um, but she told me two stories that I'll never forget. One was she told me about when she got saved. She was in her 20s and she said how, you know, she was looking at, I have a nose ring and everything else, but she was looking at some of the stuff we had going. She said, when I got saved, it was at a tent, it was a revival. And um, she said, the man, she prayed over me. She said she had earrings in. And if you knew my mom, like, she never wore earrings. She said, I had my earrings in. And, and the man said to me, all right, you saved me, you gotta take out those earrings. And she said to him immediately, my earrings don't matter to Jesus, right? So she kept the earrings in and she said, the next person, the mother woman who got saved right after her, he told her the same thing. And she pointed at my chest and said, will you make her take hers out? And she said, I immediately took mine out. I never wore them again because I'm not going to be the reason that somebody falls. And I said, that was such a, an inspirational testimony to me because she, what she was telling me was, even if you know that, you know, God is looking past that, if it's causing somebody else to fall and you're supposed to be an example, you be that example and you stand up. So that was one of the, the bigger things she told us. And then when I went away to college, you know, she was starting, that was when she was starting to go. So I had to tell her when she was looking, she said, who are you again? I said, I'm Bishop's granddaughter, you know, Tiana's little one. She said, okay, you staying with God? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm staying with God. And I'll come home and I work in the summer. She said, don't you work on the Lord's Day? Don't you work on the Sunday? I said, well, mom, I got to make money. She said, the Lord will provide you money. You come to church on the Sunday. <laughs> I immediately went back. I said, I can't work Sunday. Mom just went back. But I did. She was, she was right. And I, I felt so bad. I said, you know what? She, she's right. The Lord will provide. So it was just those two big things that she taught me. And I just wanted to share with everybody. Just, you know, let help others come to Christ like the example that she was. And let's get to church on Sunday. <laughs> treasure the most is that she understood and valued the privilege we have in talking to our God. That there was nothing that you could not tell him, there was nothing you had to endure without talking to God. And she would often talk about praying and the time God come to her for counseling, we pray. And so today I just want to encourage those who haven't yet started, start talking to God. Start telling him what's going on. Don't be afraid because he knows it anyway. Talk to him. Let this blessed woman of God be an example. I thought about the scripture that says, Honor thy father, my mother, and he'll give you long life. This woman lived to be 102. Now, I don't know how she was with her mother and father, but I choose to believe that she did what the word of God said because that's what she stood on. Her life was based on the word of God. And I know we're living in a time where a lot of young people don't think parents matter, but they say matter and all that kind of thing. But I'm a living witness that God will help you be obedient. God will help you when you don't understand if you really love him in a part of your, in your, in your heart, if you really love and cherish the privilege of having God in your life, Allow the spirit of God, the mother chestnut, giving to us to reign in you. 
allow the love of God to reign you. It would be a shame for her to have lived and be an example that she has and then don't carry it on. Mother's not going to die. Her spirit is going to be in us. Her spirit is going to be in us. We're going to continue telling, calling wrong, wrong, and right, right. She talked about it. They talked about the, um, her light on her block. That should be every one of us. In that prayer room, we prayed for the church. We prayed for our neighborhood. We prayed for our families. That prayer room, Mother Chester's prayer room, will continue on. And we're going to keep praying. It's one of the, one of the head prayer warriors. <laughs> we're going to keep praying. Why? Because we know prayer works. Hallelujah. Prayer works. Not necessarily loud, not necessarily low, but talking to God works. And then my dad used to say, put feet to your prayer. When you start praying and God touch your heart to give money to one you were praying about, go in your pocket, get some money, and take it to them. Do what God said. I'm going to sit down. I'm not going to be But I love mommy. We will all miss mommy. She had to come out of and try to go see her after prayer when she took sick. And I was going that day, and they told me to go ahead and took her home. That was a sweet, disappointing, but sweet because she was home. She talked about going home for a while. My heart would bleed when I go there sometimes and, and, and see her. But you know what? To the day she died, she loved God. And she told children, stay with God. Amen. Stay with God. So I'm going to tell you, stay with God. I thank God for this day. But I thank God for Mother Chestnut for one thing that uh, not too many people knew about it. But a lot of sermons that I preached here, Mother Chestnut had given them to me to do. And I did them. And they, they came out pretty well. You know, and I used to say to myself that, you know, uh, here's this little woman over here, this little godly woman over here, but she has something that God had given her to pass on to me. And I thank God for that. And I, I, uh, like, I miss her because, like, for many years that I did preach from that pulpit right there, I always looked over at this corner over here. And I didn't feel right until Mother Chestnut got here to sit down before I would preach. And I did this for many years. I never told anybody that Mother Chestnut had passed on to me quite a few sermons to do. You know, she would call me over there and she would say, look, can you do this for me? Said, okay, all right. So I would go ahead and do it. You know, and uh, I never told anybody, but it was because of her inspiration that a lot of the words of God that I came out, they came from her. God anointed her and she was given to me. And see, I wasn't too big or too bold to think that I couldn't do what this little lady wanted me to. Because I understood one thing. This was a vessel of God. And when she spoke, God spoke. So when she gave me something to do, scripture, I knew that God had passed this on to her for me to do. I mean, she'll be missed. But when all of God's children get together, what a time, what a time is going to be. Now, thank you. Amen. Just like I said, let the church say amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for a blessed day. Hallelujah. Going home for undone. Yeah. I just want to say, Uncle Devin was a sweetheart. I used to pass the house, going to school. He used to come here for us. Tell me, you know, we'd be cutting up and carrying on. But Uncle Devin would come out there and say, well, you know we don't act like that. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I ain't willing to tell my father. You'd be very proud. How you doing, son? You can see that here. Congratulations. That's good. We just thank you. But I used to go up to the, the home where she was at. She said, she said, who's that? I said, it's Mickey. She would say, Mickey, how are you doing? You know, and she was just the sweetest thing, because everybody else is going. She was the only mother we had up. You know what my mother? I would go up there, we'd talk. 
say, well, shut up now and go to sleep. <laughs> say, fight. Shut up and go to sleep. She said, I said, you want to bring the kids up? She said, bring the kids up, but don't bring no big kids. <laughs> she didn't want to be bothered. But you know, it's a blessing. She's just a sweet little chicken thing. And I thank God for it. Amen. And, uh, she was all that. And some. All right. and, uh, you know, we, we don't find people like that. You know, it takes a village to raise one child. Amen. You don't have no village, village no more. Like, like your brother said, it's, it's a hood. Right. You know, but I still go on. Because that's why I tell them, I said, don't do this. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm going to tell you. You cuss me out, I can still fight them. <laughs> you know, I'm serious, I'm telling you. I don't care because I love you, you know what I mean? We got to give them love. That's what the world needs. You know what I mean? So that's all I try to do. And that, that woman there, my auntie, she did that. And I told the baby, you know, she said, baby, go on. I want to go to, you know, but she went on, she went on, she knew, she knew what time it was, but we don't, we don't, we got to get our heart right, get our soul right, have a little talk with Jesus, talk about our God, and we just thank you, because that's the type of thing she was. I know I have no more to say, but because I could go on and on. I know it, yeah. Don't be rushing. That's my uncle. Pastor, I'm a I ain't gonna put you there. I'm a shepherd. Let's say thank God. Savior, yeah. as a personal Savior, yeah. 
And so she was able to walk through life, despite what life threw at her, knowing that she had a hope that was beyond this world. And so I want to thank my mom for just caring for her for so many years. She did a great job. There is nothing that you need to be ashamed about. You did what other people couldn't do. I want to thank Pastor Becky and Deacon Jay Deloach, who were her children, and who cared for her. If you look at this picture in the corner, our Bishop John W. Lewis was her son, and his wife was her daughter. So I want to thank you all and the Bible Union Church family for what you've done for Granny. Granny was special to us. And in her own way, she impacted each and every one of us. I want to thank St. Ignatius uh, Nursing Home. Is anyone here? I saw Wietta. Wietta, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. There was a time that I went up there, or very few times that I went up there, and I didn't see her helping my grandmother and just interacting with her. And I'm going to tell you, it restored my confidence in elder care. Right. You hear all these stories of how the elders are being treated, but St. Ignatius, hats off to you. So we ought to please tell them that we said thank you, and thank you for coming. And we're praying for you all, too, because we know that she was loved in that place. Now, I feel like some ice coffee. Anybody feel like ice coffee? A couple of people. If you knew my grandmother, she loved coffee and more cream than coffee. And candy. She was a candy addict. And I remember we had a gathering over at the house. We were laughing about this the other day. And, you know, people come over, you set out candy in the, the candy dishes. Well, we looked up and all the dishes were empty. And it turns out that Granny took all the candy and put it in my bag. We were asking, where's the candy? She said, oh, I took some. We said, well, Granny, that's a lot of candy for one person. But if you went and visited her, you would see candy wrappers under her pillow, candy wrappers wrapped in her, uh, in her stockings, candy wrappers everywhere, candy wrappers. But that was a love that she had, and, and you know, it almost seems like she became supernatural because she kept on living. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm thinking, I would run into people from Florence Avenue, Florence Avenue, raise your hand, raise your hand. Look at my Florence Avenue friend. Caddy, I saw Caddy, I saw Linwood, I see Terry over there, Patrick spoke. But um, she, she, she just had a love for people. She had a love for people and we we just just know that as time went on and as she kept on living we, we just I just felt that she was supernatural and so God has brought us here on this particular day I think one of the happiest days of my life to ask us a question I'm not here to preach and but I just want to ask you a question how much time do you think you have Oh I think that's a question that Granny would have asked. How much time do you think you have? She would often talk about life after death. She would often talk about eternity and where you would spend eternity. And so as her representative today, I'm here to ask you, where are you going to spend eternity? See, Granny is going to keep living. She's going to keep living. Because we have mouths. Those of us who she invested in, we have mouths. And we're going to continue to, to promote the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to step on what you believe, but I'm just saying our belief is that God loved this world so much that he gave his one and only son for you and for me. And you have to make a decision. So because you may not believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that doesn't mean He isn't the Son of God. You may not believe that there's a God, but that doesn't stop God from being who He is. It's not based on our belief. And so we want to continue in the legacy of Thelma Chestnut. She loved people. She was a youth advocate. 
Don't dare bother one of these babies because you would see a different side of Thelma Chestnut. Now, I remember, I'll tell this story real quickly. Where's Rob? I remember Rob. Wave your hand, Rob. You may not know. Rob ran from St. Bernard Street, St. Bernard Street faced Florence Avenue. And Rob was running from uh, some guys who were chasing him. And Granny was standing at the door with her arms folded. <laughs> and she told him, if you come in here, I'm going to beat you worse than them. <laughs> and Rob did an about face, turned around, faced his enemy, and I believe he beat the bricks off of two people that day. <laughs> Granny was courageous, and she instilled courage in her children, in her family. And so we stand here courageous today, just uh, lifting up the name of Jesus because that's what she instilled in us. Church was not an option, you had to go. Amen. And if you were acting up over there on that choir, she would stand up right in the middle of the preaching. And those same folded arms would give you that look and you knew what was coming. And so we celebrate her life today. I don't want you to be sad today. She wasn't a sad, she didn't live her life in sadness. She didn't live her life feeling defeated. She lived her life. Some of you don't know, she didn't pass the fifth grade. But she had a degree of integrity. Some of you don't know that she was an accountant. She could count. And every penny that was on the ground, she would tell you to pick it up. She would tell you not to leave the store without counting the change. Because if you came back with the wrong change, you had a problem. Uh, so we celebrate her today. We celebrate all of the aspects of her life. Uh, we thank God for using her. And again, I thank you all for coming and joining with us today to celebrate this life that was well lived. Nice. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Amen. I'm Peggy. I'm a McDonald's girl. Amen. 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 We talked about her loving people. And Thelma loved dogs, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> we used to go to the house, and y'all know how y'all prepare chicken and stuff? Uh -huh. And Thelma prepared that chicken just like it was for somebody. And we found ourselves going in the pot, right, Gwen? Yeah, we'd be going to get us some of that chicken that, that that dog was getting ready to eat. Amen. So I, she wasn't. She was. She was just a humanitarian. Period. She loved people. We're going to dedicate this little song. When you hear of my home going, don't worry about me. I got the right to. When you hear of my home going, don't worry about me. When you hear of my home going, don't you worry about me. When you hear of my home going,
had a, a great depression and anxiety and because of death, because of faith. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, thank God for because of death, because of grace, grace. So I thank God for uh, everything that has been said and done and everything that I've heard that I've seen uh, taking place and for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. So thank God. Amen. 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 This is Rejoicing Power. This poem I have wrote is to encourage me to say goodbye. Also means to say hello. Hello is what the angels are saying as we mourn below. Our loved ones leave one family to join another, hopefully waiting to be with mother, father, sister, or brother. The thought of their being for Christ will ease our pain. Our loved ones now have a lot to gain. When they depart, we'll say a goodbye. We'll miss them and perhaps we'll cry. Tears of joy for them come as the angels say hello. Hopefully again you'll see their loved ones who are left below. Think of our loved ones' joy as they hear our father say, Welcome, welcome, Thelma, my child. This is your day. So as we say goodbye, let us rejoice and be glad. Their trials and tribulations are something they had. No more pain, no more dying, no more suffering here. Just glorification in heaven when they get there. To the Christian, for the Christian, goodbye means hello. Think about it. Those of us waiting here below. Praise the Lord and rejoice in time. Hallelujah. 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 And I'll say this in Thomas. I used to say, if nobody else made it to heaven, you and Jesus would be there. <laughs> Prayer that I keep my hands in the hands of the Lord. I'm saying, I wish you would put your age. But let me tell you, what you always pray for is you always will pray for you. The reason we talked about this, I love you. I appreciate what you've done. Not only you, but the whole family. Look at the love that's in this room. I always tell people the good for a letter word is love. Woo! Take care. God bless. Good evening. Thank you. 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 Thank you know, we just love this family. It's everything. The stranger off the streets, you just need to give you food, clothes, whatever. And then tell you come to church on Sunday. Um, mom, oh man, she's gone, yo. This mom, I believe that it's basically the only woman in my life at age 12, coming from New York, 25 years later. It's the only woman I really knew that truly loved me, didn't know me from day one. From the day she took my last breath, already missed. This woman hit cotton at age five to see a man of color in the White House. She is truly history. Even though she was about four foot two, whatever, she was sweet when she wanted it, or she was fire when she had a bit. I was reminiscing with what Tony was talking about, and I just started crying thinking about what happened. One time at being 16, tall, skinny, calling her everything, arrogant, whatever, and I got small with her. And she came up to me, she dug, and I knew it was coming. I was going to give it to you, peace. But she comes up to me, looks up at me, and she said, Robert, you might be tall, skinny, slinky. She told me, everything in this house is a weapon. <laughs> Young and stupid, so you gotta think what she just said. You gotta break it down and decide what she said. <laughs> and then I knew what she was talking about. That's the type of woman she was. And yeah, she was truly missed. And at first, when I got the call from DC at work, I came up to Philly, I was crying all the way up. And then it hit me like, you know, she's good now. She's good now. You know, she's really good. So, 
hopefully one day I'll get to see it. And hopefully all of you get to see it. But um it's just it's it's it's, it's a rare piece. But um I'd just like to thank Robbie Jr. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Soon you'll see 
don't cry for me. Everybody sing, yes, Jesus loves me, oh yes, Jesus loves me. Come on everybody all over the world, sing it, yes, Jesus loves me. The first song you taught me was Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. God the Bible tell me so. That's right. That's right. Stay with him no matter what. That's right.